The Ninja Fricking Turtles history in the world of video games is vast and sprawling. Most people can remember a lot of the classics that arrived between 1989 and 1995, as further celebrated in the recently released critically acclaimed Cowabunga Collection, but the rest of the series is hazy in gamers' minds to say the least. In today's video, we are going to be heading back to 2007 to discuss yet another one of these many Turtles titles that has largely been forgotten. In this instance, I am referring to a game that was published and named simply as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, one of multiple games by that point that didn't bother to include a subtitle, making Turtles video game history extremely chronologically confusing indeed. At least though the theme of this one set it apart from what came before it, as this was the first entry from the franchise to be based around a feature length film. So, holding these thoughts, hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. This is the story of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the movie, the game. Yeah! Over the years on this channel, I've explored the depths of the Konami era Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles games. Once some of the most in demand video games out there, by the time the third live action movie arrived, Turtles Mania seemed well and truly burnt out. After a long break in 2003, the franchise would be successfully rebooted with the launch of the 4 kids animated series. This newfound relevance for the brand would lead to a whole new generation of Konami Turtles games that sadly did not live up to the standards of the titles that were published during the golden age for the franchise. Thankfully, we would not have to put up with Konami bringing out bad turtle games forever as fortunately the torch would be forcibly passed to another publisher. Almost inevitably, Konami would eventually lose the Turtles license. So by the time it was announced that Imagi Animation Studios were making an all new CG Turtles film, a new license holder would be chosen. This entity would be none other than Ubisoft, who are responsible for Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, Rayman and so many more. Which begs the question, were Turtles games in good hands once more? Naturally, with a major motion picture in the works, Ubisoft would want to exploit such an opportunity as much as possible, even going as far as to release their new Turtles game the very same week in the United States that the accompanying movie hit theatres. This game that marked a new era in Turtles history would come out across Windows, the PlayStation 2, GameCube, Xbox 360, Wii and even had variants on the Nintendo DS and PlayStation Portable. All of this is without even mentioning the completely different Turtles game of the same name that came out on the Game Boy Advance. It's clear that the French video game giant wanted to maximise their returns on their newly acquired heroes in Half Shell's license as much as possible. But was this in good faith to consumers? Well, let's try and analyse the situation further. If you were like the majority of Turtles fans were introduced to the famous foursome via the 1987 cartoon, then you will likely notice that these weren't exactly the same Turtles you may have been used to. Hell, they weren't the same ones from the original Mirage comics or for kids show either. This was an artistic interpretation of the Turtles that looked to be fully embracing the CG movie style of animation that was the trend of the time, leading to Imagi creating a new direction for the famous green radical heroes. All this is of utmost importance as in order to talk about the TMNT game by Ubisoft for consoles, we need to take a step back and acknowledge the importance of the promotional tie-in to the 2007 movie. Austin sensibly set in the 90s movie continuity, very loosely I might add, the movie has an all-star cast. The four turtles are voiced by Nolan North, James Anoli Taylor, Mikey Kelly and Mitchell Whitfield. Maybe Nolan North is known to casual gamers as video game royalty, but it's the rest of the cast that would get the average moviegoers interested. Further to this, Chris Evans stars as Casey Jones, the same year he had his second appearance as the Human Torch in the Fantastic Four movies. I wonder whatever happened to that actor. I doubt he starred in one of the biggest movies of all time or anything. I could look it up, but no, I don't think I will. Building on the cast years after Buffy the Vampire Slayer left for airwaves, Sarah Michelle Gellar would be April O'Neil, aiding the turtles instead of slaying the monsters of the night. And Patrick Stewart would be the highlight as Max Winters, also known as Yattle, the immortal warlord and leader of the Stone Generals. 
quite a departure from Captain Picard and Professor X if you ask me. Stuart brings Shakespearean gravitas to the world and he's acting expertise to the field. Any nudity in it? Not really. Oh. Well, it could be. In addition to all of this, sadly, this would be the final role of Mako Iwamatsu, commonly known by his mononym Mako. He was announced to be voicing Splinter on July 20th, 2006. With his casting announced and his dialogue finished, Mako passed away one day later at the age of 72. Mako was a legend in action animation, voicing Aku, the shape-shifting master of evil in Samurai Jack, and Iroh in Avatar, the last airbender. His perennial substitute, Greg Baldwin, would pick up for remaining and rework dialogue for the film, and would also carry on the roles of Iroh and Aku from Mako. Rounding out the cast with other notable celebrities and voice actors are Kevin Smith, Lawrence Fishburne, John DiMaggio, and more. Yes, Silent Bob, Morpheus, and Bender have all shared a movie with Captain America, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and Professor X. The wonders of animation bringing all sorts of different genre actors together. As for the game, with it being a Ubisoft title, they looked for inspiration and gameplay concepts from another recent hit from their company, The Prince of Persia. Coincidentally, this Arabian adventure would get a movie in 2010 starring Jake Gyllenhaal, but it would largely be considered a middle-of-the-road action film. Reusing the engine from the Prince of Persia game was a solid starting point, but as that game series were primarily single-player, this leads to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles being a single-player adventure for most of the title, which is rather off-brand considering the Turtles' ability to function as a team is one of their standout strengths. The game, of course, focuses on adapting the story of the movie, but expands it into a 16-level adventure, adding characters and plot elements not found in the finalised movie. In a GameSpot interview with Nick Harper, Ubisoft Montreal's creative director, he would elaborate, We are following the movie's story very closely and are really trying to explore the darker feelings of being a teenager, and at the same time include lots of humour, intense combat, and action. We received an early version of the film script, and it was clear that this movie was about the strength of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles family. We've added some characters from the Turtles' history that aren't in the movie, and we've expanded on some elements that are present in the movie. Of course, we had the movie plot and script as our starting point, but I think the game and film will complement each other well. The game is really an extension of the movie experience. Featuring 16 story levels and 16 challenge levels, a full playthrough of the game clocks in at around 4.5 hours. Traditional players of the Turtles may be thrown off instantly by one of the significant changes to the medium, as unlike most other Turtles games, this isn't one where it simply lets you pick up your favourite turtle and bust shell. Guided by comic book pages and narrated by Splinter, the game starts with Leonardo training as a rudimentary tutorial. As the game roughly follows the plot of the movie, the story follows the turtles reuniting as after the defeat of Shredder, they have been fractured, or more fittingly I guess, splintered. Movement throughout the world isn't anything out of the norm for the era, as players can jump, collect coins, wall climb, leap from ledge to ledge, etc. Basically, you can easily see the Assassin's Creed influence on the game. Sprinkled throughout the map are collectible coins for unlockables, and navigating to certain areas will get the characters to casually engage in dialogue. Fighting isn't too out of the norm for the franchise, as players will engage in basic and rudimentary combos, charge attacks and dodges, and frequent checkpoints which will provide even the youngest players a fair chance. Beating enemies powers up your special meter, allowing for the turtles to slow time and dominate the arena. Once the four have been reunited, you can swap the hero at any time, but you sadly never have the four teaming up for four player action. There's not even a simple two player option, which is incredibly disappointing for a game well into the online era, and known for having multiplayer action. Considering the size of the company that Ubisoft is, you would think that they would have the resources to have included a lot more features in this one. An argument could easily be made that this was a step down from even Konami's recent Turtles outings. IGN, for example, would savage the game, giving it a mere 6 out of 10, highlighting Ubisoft's repurposing of another game engine and targeting the title to a younger audience, rather than putting any effort into trying to make something genuinely good. 
they would comment. TMNT can be described as a light version of Prince of Persia, but don't let that fool you into thinking you'll get a similar experience. The gameplay here is designed with a small child in mind, and even then it may be too easy. Video games are fun because they challenge us or simulate our minds in some way. TMNT doesn't. With no cooperative mode available, single button combat, and straightforward level design, all you're left with are some nice animations and decent platforming that just don't carry the weight. Nintendo Power would receive the game even more harshly, giving the game 5 out of 10. They would state that the real shame is that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles once had a legacy of good video games. Recent titles such as this one have sent that history to the sewers. GameSpot would add to the criticism penning that between the overly simplistic combat and sometimes obnoxious platforming sequences, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is like a man without a country. Younger audiences are likely to balk at some of the more frustrating elements of the platforming, and older players are going to be bored to tears by the effortless fighting mechanics. The moments when you actually do find yourself having fun with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are just frequent enough to prevent the game from being wholly unadvisable to fans of the film desperate to take part in some interactive Turtles adventures. But for everyone else, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is one you can safely pass on. Games Radar would bury the effort too, commenting, the game aims low and ends up typical and forgettable. It's even short at maybe 6 hours if you stretch it. If this was a real turtle, it would be one sitting on the side of the road watching cars whiz by. Not the one lacing up to take on the rabbit and the road and dare its way to immortality in the history books. PC Zone UK found the game insulting, even if it was meant to be aimed at children. Adding, it's for kids and that's fine but children deserve better. Get them a version they can actually control. Better still, get your beloved Sprogs a game that won't decay their minds through dumb repetition. Whether rough reviews or simply the passage of time, the game was at one point planned for the original Xbox and the PlayStation 3, but both of those versions were cancelled. A PSP and Game Boy Advance release took the concept of adapting the movie in two drastically different ways. The PSP version is a bit more of a streamlined version of the console game, polygons and all, with the GBA game on the other hand offering up a solid sprite based game. As for the main 2007 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game based around the movie, sadly it can't be said that the video game would even receive poor sales due to its low quality. In fact, on the PlayStation 2 at least, it has reached the vaunted greatest hit status in the States meaning that Ubisoft would make great profits regardless of the game itself being bad. I guess stories like this are proof of how huge AAA publishers can afford to make deals to publish games built around huge licenses, with little effort needing to be put into the game's quality to deliver sales results. The likes of Acclaim along with their LJM publishing brand had already proven for years that games do not have to be any good to sell well. So why would Ubisoft reinvent the licensed gaming wheel when they simply didn't have to? Those who played this game in 2007 may very well have been missing Konami already. Still, it has to be said, while it is easy to crap on Ubisoft for this game, to give credit where credit is due, their Game Boy Advance game was pretty damn marvellous. So how was this possible, you may ask? Well, because I guess the stakes were lower. The team who worked on that one could afford more to make something out of passion. They would deliver a great little 2D beat-em-up in an era the world was largely deprived of them. But that's not all. Main staff members who worked on this game would later go on to develop the cult favourite Scott Pilgrim vs The World. And as recently as last year, the absolutely amazing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge a video game that some even go as far to credit as simply the best Turtles game ever made. But there is no doubt that those who worked on all of these games took influence from Konami's 90s work, something the team who worked on the console movie game clearly didn't bother to do. As much as we criticise Ubisoft though, the butterfly effect of Ubisoft gaining the Turtles license has contributed to some of the greatest beat-em-ups of all time coming into existence, even if their console game based around the movie was an absolute disgrace. Taking all we have learned today into account when it comes to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ubisoft games, 
the company at the first hurdle already proved that they might just not have been the right fit for the brand. There's a reason this game is largely forgotten, and the Konami classics were both bundled together and used as inspiration for two of the biggest releases of 2022. Unfortunately past this point, there would no doubt be more Ubisoft Turtles games, all of which will likely function as talk points for future episodes on here, so be sure to subscribe for those. Anyway, huge thank you to my friend Chad Bonin, yes that is his real name for co-writing this episode with me, and if you want to learn more about the awesome Ubisoft Montreal's GBA game, click this video now. Yeah!